Hey guys, so I'm back, and um, well, this one, this broadcast, I'm going to be honest, I'm very nervous. Um, let me just give you a rundown of how things have been going, and I, I, excuse me today, I'm like, I'm really, really exhausted. He got me up really early this morning, um, Father did, uh, to get ready for for this message. Um so I haven't had time to put makeup on or anything. So, you know, just excuse my mess. I look awful. But, um, you know, I don't come on here to be a, a princess. I come on here to <laughs> to do what he's called me to do. So um, let, let me just backtrack um, the last few weeks um, and tell you what's been going on. Since I came back from vacation, um, I have been feeling extremely lost and I, I know that in the last video you know me telling you guys about vacation um, I went on there and I told you guys that even before then I had felt like I had been distant from him because I hadn't really had time to spend with him um, but I was having dreams up to that point um, and I did share a dream with you guys um, one that I had had right before I had gone on vacation about the house cracking and uh, I, I went ahead and shared that one since I've been back from vacation, um, I have been attacked. I have been attacked emotionally, spiritually. Um, I have been physically drained. It got so bad that Friday evening, to, what's today? Today is, I don't even know what today is. Today is Saturday, Sabbath. Happy Sabbath, you guys. So last Friday, um, I, it got to the point where that evening I started feeling really, just really funny, really different. It just felt weird. And I ended up in a slump um, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. I was almost like this flat, like almost like a melancholy um, just attitude. You know, I wasn't really up for anything. I wasn't really smiling at no one. I wasn't really talking. I wasn't really having conversations. It was really hard for me. And my husband kept asking me 30, 40 times a day, you know, what's going on? What, what's wrong with you? And I would tell him nothing. And, and really it's like, I couldn't explain how I felt. I almost felt like I was spiritually drained and I felt like there was a, some kind of a battle going on. And we know that Ephesians 6 talks about there's a spiritual battle. It's a battle that's unseen. It's not in the physical world. It's a manifest, manifestation of the spiritual world that's, that there's a battle going on for your soul. And at the end of those four or five days that I felt that way, um, that occurred to me. that That's exactly what was going on. And no matter how hard I tried to pray... You know, there are times that we get away from that. We get away from the prayer. We get away from reading the word. But we get it, we, we get away from it into the point that that's a, it's almost a choice. You know, we choose to not read the word at that moment or we choose not to, to pray at a certain point, you know, because maybe other things get in the way. This wasn't that. This was... I tried. I was trying to read the word. I was trying to pray. I was getting on my knees. I was trying to talk to God. And no matter how hard I tried those four or five days that I felt like this, my mind was so foggy that I couldn't even focus. I, I um, called a sister of Christ in mind because she could tell that something was going on. And we talked for about an hour and she was just like, there's just a big difference in you. I mean, she's like, come out of her in Jesus' name. And I was not coming to. I mean, I was just like, she prayed for me. I was like, okay, thank you. You know, let's move on. You know, sorry, Tracy. But that's that's what, the, what I was feeling at that point, you know. And, um, and she mentioned to me, which what I already knew, you know, sometimes we feel that way, especially if we're being disobedient. Um, sometimes God will kind of back himself off. And I've known that for myself. And I know that she has mentioned it before for herself. You know, I don't know if anybody else feels that way about themselves sometimes, but that when we don't do something that God has asked of us to do, he kind of tends to back off just a little bit. And until we obey what it was that he was trying to get us to do in the first place. 
and I knew this in the back of my mind because this once one topic has been at me since the day that I had this dream and I was like I'm not sharing this I'm not gonna put this up there's no way that I'm gonna put this dream up and every day that he has told me to I come up with an excuse as to why I'm not gonna put it up sometimes I don't even come up with an excuse I just flat out say no and I have not had any dreams since I came back from vacation like I said, my mind has been in a fog. I have not been able to read. I've not been able to study. I've not been able to pray. Even my nighttime prayers, I get on my knees and I try and it ends up with a two second prayer, you know, just to protect me and my family while we go to sleep. And then I crawl into bed and um, that needs to stop <laughs> because I have, I don't like it when he's not talking to me. I don't like it when I feel like he's angry at me. And Last night before I went to bed, I knew exactly what it was that he wanted me to do, and I told him that I would do it, and he made sure of that this morning. He woke me up, and I went to the Word, and I started, you know, researching, you know, whatever it was that he led me to, and this is only by him, you guys, because I don't know what the significance is of it. It's a heavy topic, and that's why I didn't put it up. I had this dream. Um, and just, and this is, this is one reason why I didn't, I didn't put it up in the first place. <sighs> well, three or three weeks ago or four weeks ago, may not even have been that long ago, um, that, that, um, the incident happened over there in Turkey where they were trying to overthrow, um, Erdogan. And, um, when that happened, I immediately said to myself, I should have put this dream up and I and something would either was the flesh or it was my flesh or Satan set telling me you can't put it up now because people are just gonna think that you're just putting it up because of what you know has been going on over there and I was like yeah you know that's true I'm not gonna put it up because then I'm gonna get a lot of backlash you know and as the days went on something kept telling me you know I know it was father telling me you've got to put this up and I kept telling him no I'm not gonna put it up just flat out I'm not gonna do it so I figured I'd pull up and let you guys see if you can see it um, the date um, of when this was um, when I sent this to a, fr a sister of Christ of mine a friend via email this was a dream that I had on May 29th of this this year 2016 I sent it to her about 2 50 almost 3 o'clock so I don't know if you guys can 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 you see that I don't know uh, May 29th Istanbul Turkey okay sorry Sandy <laughs> your, your your email address isn't on there just your name so um, I didn't know how to block block her name out but anyways so back on May 29th I had this dream and this dream when I woke up I was led to go straight to my Bible and start searching and exactly what I searched for then I found again today and this is and this because I didn't write anything down then things that I've written down today I didn't write it down then but it's exactly what I found then I found this morning so I know that this is what God is wanting me to do and I'm hoping and I'm praying I'm covering this video you know, I'm pleading the blood of Jesus over this video that this is going to break whatever it is that I'm going through and that he will open back up to me and and accept my repentance, you know. Um, so this is what I saw that night. This is May 29th. I had a dream that I was standing in what almost seemed like a, I want to say it felt like a bank. And it was this huge two-story bank, and it was surrounded by glass. There was glass walls, the windows everywhere. And as I'm in this bank, I know that it was me and my son, the, my four-year-old, Austin, and then my daughter, Faith, was, I know she was waiting outside the building. And um, I was in there, and I don't even know what I was doing in there. You know, my husband takes care of most of the business, but I was in this bank. And there was this man, there was this man, and he had his back turned towards me, and there was a, a woman, and she had on the black um, 
head covering and the long black gown. And she handed me a piece of paper. And in on this piece of paper, the only thing that was written on there was the word Istanbul. And there was some numbers on it. And I can't tell you what the numbers were. But, and I can't tell you what any other names were on this, what looked to be like a check. And she looked at me and she said, I need to cash. And I said to her, like, she almost came to me and said that to me. I'm shaking so bad, you guys, because this, this is, I'm so nervous about putting this video out there. But um, she, it's almost like she came to me and was said, you know, was wanting me to help her somehow. Um, maybe if like I was going to understand her. And she said to me, I need to cash. And I said, you can't cash this check. It's not completely filled out. And she wasn't understanding what I was telling her either. And she, she repeated again, I need to cash. And I said, you can't cash this. And I was trying to pronunciate everything the best that I could. I was trying to speak slow. And I kept telling her, you can't cash this. It's not completely filled out. And I remember when I looked at it again, the only thing I picked up on there was the word Istanbul. And I know you guys are going to laugh at this because I feel like a real idiot. But when I got up, I was like, Istanbul, what is that? <laughs> when I got up out of my dream, and I know, I know, right? Registered nurse that doesn't know anything. I'm good at that stuff. I'm not good at the, you know, history stuff. So... I was like, what is that? You know, I was like, I've heard that before, but I have no clue. Like I said, you guys, I don't watch a lot of news. So I um, got up and I started researching and I went straight to the net, the internet, because I was like, well, what is that? I was like, I've never even read that in the Bible, you know, that I could remember. So I went straight to the internet and I pulled up Istanbul and lo and behold, it's in Turkey. Right. So that was, you know, that was number one. I got that out of the way. I knew where that was. But back to the dream before I woke up. So she said that. And just as she said that, she snatched the check out of my hand. Like she was really frustrated with me. And she sh was shaking her head like, like I was ridiculous. And she was walking away from me. And she was mumbling something. But I couldn't understand what she was saying. She was speaking English. I know she was speaking English. But I either couldn't understand what she was saying because she was mumbling or that was taken from me from the dream. But she was walking away mumbling like she was mad. She was walking fast. And the guy who was standing there with her, because he was with her, he was just, he had his back towards me. When he turned around was Erdogan. I don't really dream about government people. And I don't know too much about him. And, but I remember his face very vividly. I remember it very clearly. And he looked at me and he just went after her. Like he, I'm not after her. Like he was going to get to get her, get her. He was like going after her. Like he was following her. Like he was with her together. Just as they were walking out of this glass building, I saw what looked like bombs started to fall. And I immediately, for some reason, something said to me, the glass isn't going to shatter. So I ran to the door and I grabbed my daughter who was outside and I told her to come in and everybody who was inside, I had them barricade like the doors. And I remember in this dream, I was holding my son. He was like grabbing on to my waist, standing underneath me. And I was pushing this door, this glass door, I was pushing it and holding it shut. And in my, and like I said, in my dream, something kept telling me the glass isn't going to shatter. And these bombs started to fall. And then it almost was like this dream was over, but I wasn't completely awake yet. And as this dream was over, I saw what looked like a beautiful, like the only thing that I thought of when I first woke up was a Japanese cherry blossom. That's what I saw. It was gorgeous. It was ginormous. It was so pretty. And it was... So it was like pinkish purple. It was so, I mean, it was just beautiful. This tree was huge. And I woke up and I was like, well, why in the world would I see, because I've seen this tree before. I've seen it in another dream that I had. Um, 
but this was about a year ago that I saw a tree like this in this dream. But this dream wasn't a bad dream. It was an actually it was a good dream. And um, but I I was trying to figure out why he was showing me a dream with that scenario, like a, I mean a tree with that scenario, you know. And I I almost felt like it didn't fit, but I researched it anyways. So long story short, let's get to what he has shown me okay about this tree and turkey so all right so I said that the tree what what I saw from the tree it almost mimicked a cherry blossom tree as I go on to research this tree I find that there is a mimicking tree that looks almost identical to it okay it is also known as a this other this tree that mimics this um, Japanese cherry blossom is known as a red bud. It's an eastern red eastern red bud, um, also known as the Judas tree. Okay, it does grow in Israel. I did pick up on that a little bit, but if you put into the web um, Judas tree, Turkey, it will only bring you to Istanbul, Turkey. Exactly what I saw on that check. Um, it is native to Istanbul. Back in 20, um, this year, there was a article that was written. Um, the article was written by, hold on you guys, because I've got like notes everywhere. I'm so sorry. TRTworld.com. And it was written back in March 17th, on March 17th, 2016, this year. An article came out that says that this tree, which is known as the Judas tree, should become the symbol of the city, meaning the city of Istanbul. It says, like the cherry blossom, it is, is to Japan, claiming that the Judas tree is the same for Istanbul. And this was, this was proclaimed by the forestry minister, um, and he announced 2012 as the year of Erguan. Not not Erguan as in the president. I'm saying that this is another name for this tree. It's spelt different, but it's the same pronunciation. And if you go to pronunciation of, which is pronunciation of.com, you can type in the word, which is another word for this Judas tree, another word for Eastern Redbud, it is E-R-G-U-V-A-N. Very similar to his spelling of his name. His spelling is E-R-D-O-G-U-N. Some E-R-G-O-D, or, no, I'm sorry, E-R-D-O-G-A-N. Erdogan is his spelling. The spelling of the tree is E-R-G-U-V-A-N. Same pronunciation. And if you go to pronunciationof.com, it'll tell you that it, that's how you pronounce it, which I thought was very interesting. And um, now the word Erdogan for the tree is derived from two words, uh, Circe's siliquestrium, known as the fruit tree. Now, this tree is also called the Judas tree because it is believed in history that this is the tree that Judas hung himself on. It was originally a white bud tree. And because they say that the tree, the tree was ashamed when he hung himself, that the red, the buds turned to a red, purplish color, indicating blood. And we all know that, you know, Judas was hung himself on the potter's field. That is in Matthew 27, verse 5. I'll let you guys look that up by yourself. And that is near Jerusalem, um, which is also known as the field of blood. Okay, so these are really the only two prominent places that this tree is known to grow. I mean, it can grow other places in the Middle East, but these are the two main areas. And if you search up on the web, you know, the, the Judas tree, it will come up as Istanbul, Turkey, um, which I thought was really weird. And then the name Erguvan, which is the name of the tree as well. Um, I don't know, you know... I mean, I don't know what he's trying to tell me with that. I, all I know is that 
I mean, could he be saying that he's the Antichrist? I don't know. I don't know. This is exactly why I didn't want to put this video up. I know nothing about this stuff. It's a heavy topic. I don't like to get into who the Antichrist is because we know that it, there's so many possible candidates right now. I just found that this was a little out there when he gave me this dream back in May. And the fact that he put this tree in with this dream and lo and behold, this tree is from Istanbul, exactly what I saw on that check. The Turkish name for this tree is a mimic of Erdogan's name. It's exactly who I saw in this dream. It's also known as the Judas tree. And Judas hung himself. He betrayed our Messiah for 30 pieces of silver as Satan entered into him. So we know that Erdogan is not for Jews. He's not for Christians. Um, I, like I said, I don't know too much about him, but I do know that much. Whether or not God is telling me that this is who this man is, I don't know. You know, guys, sometimes we can get dreams and we can get visions and God isn't leaving it up to us to interpret them. He's just wanting us to put it out there for a warning. Maybe it's meant for someone else to interpret. I don't know. Sometimes I do have dreams and visions where he gives me childlike symbolism to help me to understand and I'm able to interpret some things. But we have to remember that not every, not even everybody who was in the Word of God that was mentioned for having dreams and visions, not everyone could interpret their own. You know, they needed someone else to help them. And who knows? You know, maybe this man is the Antichrist. I don't know. It could be the Pope. It could be Obama. I don't know. All I know is that I had this dream. I know there's some significance to it. He wouldn't have shown me the tree with so many similarities to this place and this man if there wasn't some significance because I can't just come up with this stuff on my own. So, you know, I'm sorry, you guys. I'm just, I'm really, like, emotional <laughs> right now. And I've been having a really hard last, the last two weeks because of the fact that I have not put this out there. I did not want to put it out there. And... I'm just tired of not having my God speak to me and talk to me the way that he was because I just refused to do something that I know that he wanted me to do, even if I didn't know anything about it. Just me stepping out in faith and telling you guys exactly what it is that he wanted me to tell you, I'm praying that that's going to be what he wanted me to do. So, you know, you guys can put your comments down at the bottom. Um... Let me know what you think. You, could, you guys can do your own research. If you come up with anything extra, put it down at the bottom and let me know um, if there's anything that you guys know about it, about the tree or its significance or, or whatever, you know, with Turkey or, or whatever, you know, even the president over there. I Just let give me any information that you can come up with and I will pray on it and I'll take it. So... Um, you guys have a blessed day. Thanks for listening and um, happy Sabbath. I'll talk to you guys soon. Okay, bye.